So uh, one other thing about today's video regarding Tim Keller's lie is that what he put forward in that thread is one part of a two-part scam. So the scam starts, you know, the progressives are good on caring for the poor, the conservatives are good on human sexuality, and so let's make room for both, right? That's part one of the scam. Part two of the scam is to say, well, the Bible really just whispers about human sexuality. And so unless you want to be petty, then probably you should consider supporting the progressives because the Bible says much more about caring for the poor. You see, it's a two-part scam, right? So, you know, yes, you could care for the poor. I mean, they might die or you could hold fast to human sexuality and vote for the Republicans who don't care about the poor, but they do care about human sexuality. You see, it's, it's a, it's a two part scam all designed to pull the church further and further progressive. And this, this is an evil direction anyway, because again, the Bible does talk about caring for the poor, but it talks about caring for the poor in a very specific way that does not look anything like progressive politics. One more thing about that Tim Keller thread. I think it gives you a window accidentally into his mindset because he starts off the thread and he says, you know, uh, this is a thread about how Christians don't fit into modern politics. You know, um, you know, Bible talks about caring for the poor, but also talks about human sexuality. And then he says something interesting. He says, to our modern ears, this sounds like a contradictory mishmash of liberalism and conservatism. So think about that for a second because it only sounds like a mishmash if you have the opinions of a progressive propagandist, because that's their propaganda. Conservatives don't care about the poor, which is untrue. I mean, every conservative I know actually does care about the poor and gives a lot of money to the poor and all of these things. And so he, he equates the modern mind with essentially progressive propaganda regarding conservatives. That's his mindset. That's his context. So to him, the modern mind, it, it assumes progressivism. It assumes progressive propaganda about conservatives and things like that. It's so interesting when you think about it. So one more thing, too. So uh, Tim Keller, you know, right, right on cue, he wrote a thread defending Francis Collins and trying to pretend like it's somehow still legitimate to protect Francis Collins, even though all this evil stuff has come out about what he did, about how he funded research that is just uh, monstrous. You know, he doesn't care about abortion, doesn't care about that because, you know, it might yield uh, good results. I mean, you there might be there might be life giving benefits to buying body parts from Planned Parenthood, thus creating a market for killing babies. So he's comparing this kind of thing and it doesn't name him because this is his style, right? He's above the fray. So he doesn't name Francis Collins, but everybody knows what he's talking about. He says, it's like Joseph, you know, Joseph was an official in Egypt. It's like Daniel, you know, Daniel was an official in Babylon. And so see, just like that, you can be salt and light and all of that. And Tim Keller's whole thing is he's trying to confuse Christians, right? Because it's nothing like that. It's nothing like that because Daniel, you know, he prayed in public knowing that he'd be executed for it. Courageous, faithful, did not, uh, did not uh, even for a moment compromise himself. Meanwhile, Francis Collins is signing the checks, you know, for the baby fetal cells and for the body parts and for the, the monstrous research and trying to destroy scientists for dissenting and, and the, the, man, the mandates and stuff like that, mandating gene therapy for people. This guy's a monster. He's a ghoul. It's nothing like Daniel. It's nothing like Joseph. And then he has the audacity to say, well, you know, it's, it, we, we got to allow space because think about how much worse it would be if he wasn't there. Yeah, you know what he means by that is imagine the tone of the guy who ordered the, the baby body parts. I mean, his tone might have been unchristian. So at least with Francis there, you know, when he's ordering, you know, a, a few human hearts for research, you know, kill the babies, get me the hearts kind of thing. Well, at least he has a nice winsome tone. Tim Keller, man. Tim Keller. I, I, you know, you, you just don't even really know what to do about it. Why didn't you guys tell me about this Joel Rainey guy? It's amazing. So I put a video out just the other day called Why Shouldn't She Preach, right? And a few days later, you get a prime example of why she shouldn't preach in multiple different you know, ways. So here's what happened. So Amy Bird preaches on Sunday, this past Sunday. 
And uh, it's, a, it's a horrible sermon, ridiculous. I mean, it's just full of nonsense, right? It's exactly what you'd expect from a feminist preacher. So here's the reality, right? So, so she starts to get criticized for it because that's what the pulpit is. When you preach the words of God, some people aren't gonna like it and they're gonna criticize you for it. Or you're gonna preach words that aren't God's word and people that do love God are gonna criticize you for it because you're preaching nonsense. So predictably, that's what happens because that's what the pulpit is. It's a lightning rod. And so people are criticizing her. So now Joel Rainey gets online and he says, well, why don't you be a man and come to me about it? It's not her fault, it's me. And he's like thumping his chest like with all this bravado, like he's this protective man. You're not a protective man. You're a pastor. You put her in harm's way. Her, hus- her husband's really ultimately responsible for her. So well, I don't know why his, her husband's not protecting her, putting her in this position where she's going to start fielding this kind of, kind of criticism. Look, if she starts feeling bad or if she's discouraged or if she's harmed, spiritually it's your fault for putting her in that position so don't go acting all big and bad now after the fact after you put her on the front lines to fight your battles for you you put her on the front lines to fight your battle battles for you now you're feeling bad about it so you're going to act all big and bad and be like well why don't you come to me like a man it's not fooling anybody you're, it's your fault what she did. It's your fault she preached a bunch of nonsense. It's your fault she's now receiving criticism. And the, and the, and the, the thing about women that's beautiful is not that they're supposed to be the lightning rod receiving the criticism. They're not supposed to be fighting our battles for us. So where, wh- why is this pastor not doing his job? Where's her husband? Why isn't he doing his job? It's unbelievable, and quite frankly, everyone can see through it.